This is Julian and I'm here in Bari. And what I want to talk about in this video here is how to stop being needy. How to get rid of this vibe that's just toxic, that repels everyone, this vibe of desperation. We've all experienced it, someone going up and just, uh, you feel it, like they need something from you. There's that neediness, please approve of me, please like me, I need this from you. And it's so toxic that, I mean, you could argue it's probably one of the worst vibes to put out there ever. So how to stop being needy, three simple steps. Sit back, pay attention, and enjoy. We think that the more we need something, the better our chances of getting it, but that's fucking bullshit. Okay, now why? Let's crack into it. Number one, the strategy doesn't work. The more you need something, the more you're going to push it away. Why? I'm sure you've heard of your comfort zone, right? Everyone knows this? The zone de confort. That becomes your comfort zone. The needing becomes your comfort zone. So I'll take you back to my uh, teenage years. Growing up as a little kid in Switzerland, I was very shy. I couldn't speak to women, and I liked music. So what happened? I would go to bed at night after school growing up, and I'd listen to all these fucking punk songs, right? Where it's like, you know, when I get the girl, do, 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 and you get the girl, do, do. and I'm like, yeah, when I get the girl, and that's what I'd fall asleep to, swear to God. Emo songs, punk songs, every fucking song was about getting the girl. And I had the girl in mind. I had many girls in mind. I'm like, fuck, any girl who likes me, and that's all I think about going to bed at night. And I did this for years. When I get the girl, when I finally talk to her, and now we're, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, my life will be complete, right? Anyone feel this way? You anyone obsessed? Or we're like, when I get the girl, just me? No one else listens to emo music, really? Is that why the market is so fucking big and literally most songs are emo music? Maybe not in Paris. You guys like Gahu? Or is that <laughs> past your side? <laughs> so anyway. What was that song, Belle? Yeah, you'd listen to that, like, Belle, oh, when I finally meet her. So anyway, that was me. And there are many sayings in books, like, hey, the more you need something, right, the more you'll fucking get it. But that's not true. You want to know why? And I caught myself doing this. There were opportunities where I could go up to that girl, where I'm like, I really need the girl, and when I get her, my life is complete. And I wouldn't do it. And I questioned myself, I'm like, why don't I do it? You want to know why? Because if I got the girl, I can't listen to those songs anymore, right? If I got her, I can't listen to songs about when I get her, because I got her. And where, what happens to my emo nights? I can't have my emo nights crying myself to sleep, because I got the girl next to me. I'm like, well, I got her now, and I'm happy, but I wish I could listen to my emo songs about when I'll get her. So I'd push it away. You become addicted to that state of needing, that state of lack. And this applies to everything. People like really need success. So like, you know what? My life, when I have the money, hot damn, when I have the money, I'll be able to, you know, move closer to the center of Paris, all right? Move out of the ghetto, which is most of Paris. Move out of France, <laughs> okay. We all have these ideas. When I have the money, and you become addicted to that. And you're not gonna want the money, because then what happens to your comfort zone of needing the money? Okay, this strategy of the more you need it, the more you'll get it, is false. The more you need it, the more you become hooked on needing it, and you don't want to feel anything else. To the point where even if you get the thing, like say you're like really craving money, you're like, I need money, I need money, I need money, I need money, and say someone forces it on you. Despite all the self-sabotage to push it away, they're like, dude, here's the fucking money. You're gonna need it even more, right? You ever see that? Like people who like really need money, the more they get, the more they need. Crazy, right? People are like fucking millions, obsessed with money. They're like, I just need one more, I just need one more euro. Fuck the millions, one more euro, that's all I need. They're hooked on this state of needing. Cut that shit. Neediness does not work. When you hear these sayings like, you need this needing, this burning desire, fuck that. It is a lie. You don't get anything you need. You become hooked on needing, you self-sabotage, and if you get it, despite that, you will always need more. OK? 
Okay, that's the first thing to understand when it comes to neediness. The second is being realistic. And ask yourself, what is it that I'm actually after? Okay, if you take it back to me in my teenage years in fucking Switzerland, needing the girl, I'm like, you know what? Like, I sort of got it. You put me on a lie detector test and you're like, why do you need her? What will you get from this girl? I'm like, everything. <laughs> For real. I literally thought, gun to the head, tell the fucking truth. <laughs> you're like, oh shit, is that a real, no. Um, <laughs> what, like, what would I say? I'm like, dude, like, all I need is a girl. I just want a girlfriend. I don't have to worry about money after that. I don't have to worry about anything after that. Just get me a girlfriend. And we think that, right? We, we glorify it. There's this halo effect around everything we need. You might be thinking right now, you know what? I just really need to move. I really need a promotion. I really need more money. I need cooler friends. I need access to this fucking place. And there's this halo effect where you literally think, that is the answer to all of my problems, right? No? Is that just me, right? Like literally, if you're a single guy and you've never had a girlfriend and you're a fucking virgin, you think that getting a girlfriend will solve everything. Like that's it, you win at life. I have a girlfriend, oh fuck it, fuck work, fuck money, fuck everything, I win. Literally, right? That's your happy ending. Is it true? No. What about that access, that cool thing? You know, I just wish I could have access to this really cool club. I thought that for a while. I really wanted access to the exclusive clubs. That'll solve my life problems. Did it? No. I just wish I had more money. It would solve everything. Did it? No. Yes, it, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. So the second step is not only realizing that this strategy of needing something doesn't work, the second step is deglorifying what you need and see it for what it is, All right? Like money. Who here wants more money? Huh? Who here thinks right now, the answer to all my problems is fucking money? You fucking gold digging pieces of shit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Everyone wants more money, but what is money really? It's fucking paper, right? That's literally it. Deglorify it, deglorify it. The money, it's paper. That's it. What does it do? It doesn't do much, right? All it does is it gives you, I guess, access to more ways to numb yourself and escape yourself, but that's it. That's it. Literally, the best thing you can do with money is buy Transformation Mastery, because that'll give you happiness. <laughs> they say money can't buy happiness, but that's not true. <laughs> um, but no, if you actually think about it, what does it do? Instead of buying like fucking, or just not buying water, just drinking water from the sink, you can get this fucking Vitel glass water from 1854. That's it. Instead of uh, escaping yourself in your PlayStation, playing some fucking Red Dead Redemption 2, you can travel the world with a bunch of models, right? But it's the same thing. You're still escaping yourself. It doesn't do shit. It's just paper. Deglorify it. Everything you're after, take away the halo effect, including a partner. I really need a girl. I really need a guy. That'll complete me a relationship. Fuck no. You know what that does? Especially if it's coming from the wrong place, it'll create a lot more tension and a lot more problems. That will not complete you. Okay? So deglorify it. If you see a partner like, I really want a girl, I really want a guy, remember, they take shits. And not just any kind of shit. They have diarrhea and it fucking flies out and flies right back up and stains their ass. Guys, girls, any kind of gender, their asses get stained. And not a little, and actually take it in, because I kid you not, that was my mentality. I'm like, you know what, this girl, she shits perfume. No, she doesn't. She has diarrhea. She's a human fucking being. Deglorify, take it off that pedestal. Shit flying out like little like up on the fucking ceiling, shit on the pants, piss on the pants, like smells, sweats, like farts all the fucking time. Probably multiple people here farted, like let me sneak a solid fart. Multiple of the women farted here, like they won't notice their guys, like that. They are human. You're smiling because you fucking know. She's like, I did that. No, now this is not bad, and this is the other side. It's not something to judge or be like, they fart? Women fart? What? 
Like literally, if you're having an epiphany there, oh my God. You're like, they shit. I never knew it came out. I thought it just, just like, what? Yes, it's not something bad. It's actually good. You see the behind the scenes. You see that they're human just like you. And the more you see them for who they are and what they are, the less of this need, uh, this toxic vibe comes from it. Okay. Number three, give yourself what you think that thing or person will give you. Okay. Learn how to give it to yourself. And uh, for this, I have the best way of explaining it, which you might have heard before. I call it emotional masturbation. <laughs> ah, you know, you know. So, let's take this example. I need a girl. Why? To make me feel happy. Okay? Just a classic example. I need a guy to make me feel happy. So that's what you want. You need the person to make you feel this. What you need to learn how to do is a stepping stone to the to, to really getting to the cause is how can I give myself that happiness? How can I not depend on that person, that thing, to give me that happiness? Right? And the best way to illustrate this is emotional masturbation. The way we act when we're needy, it's as if we have a dick, we have a cunt, you know, two vulgar words, and we can't jack off, we can't fucking flick our bean or stick our fingers in there. And we're walking around, and we really need to come, right? Imagine, I'm like, I really need to fucking come right now. Guys, girls, I need to come. I don't care who it is. I need to come. I, make me come. Literally, make me come. Make me come. Make me come. You, yeah, Jackie boy, make me come. Make me come. I need it. No, I need to come, damn it. That could totally be cut out of context, like clip. Julian Blanc, I need to come, damn it. <laughs> Remember this guy? <laughs> yeah. But actually, think about it. It's true. We're all like, I need to come. I need to come. And that's the neediness. It's like, make me come, dude. Jack me off, man. Touch it. Fucking finger me, man. Finger my fucking anus. Just make me come. <laughs> and here's the thing. That's neediness. You need someone to make you fucking come. And what you have to realize is that you got two hands <laughs> and multiple fingers, I hope. And with those two hands, you can fucking do it. That's how I do it, because I'm so big. <laughs> That's how you fucking make yourself come, or you can do it, OK? That's what you must learn how to do. You must learn how to jack yourself off. You must learn how to finger yourself emotionally. That does not mean for the one weirdo in this room, here we go. <laughs> okay, no. But it does mean how to push your own buttons, how to make yourself feel good, right? And then guess what? When you walk up to someone, instead of being like this desperate, needy piece of shit who's like, jack me off, you're like, I'm doing fine, man. Wanna join in? Wanna join in? It's like, hey, if he joins in, great. Two hands, awesome. But if he doesn't, I'm gonna come either way. Party keeps on going, I'm coming, right? Does this make sense? That's literally what neediness is and the solution to neediness. Learn how to give yourself what you think that person will give you. If you need them to jack yourself off, learn how to jack yourself off, right? And then you can still go up, still talk, still go into that situation, but it doesn't matter and you're just feeling fucking good, eh? And here's the other thing with that too. If you don't, do this and you go in needy, even in a relationship, manipulation is bound to happen. And this is key. And this is why a lot of relationships end. This whole idea of you complete me is the worst thing ever. Fuck that. Fuck Disney movies for you complete me. Disgusting. I see that shit, I throw up inside. You complete me. If you ever said that to someone, well, I mean, it's romantic. I mean, you complete me. Here's, here's a little necklace with half a heart. And here's my half a heart. We, look, when we hang out, ding, you know? <laughs> it's romantic. It's a cool idea. But fuck that. Why? Because what's the implication? Though without that person, there's something missing in you. Right? And guess what? If there's something missing in you, 
without that person, you need that person. And what will happen, and it's not even consciously, it's unconsciously, you're like, I cannot lose this person because I lose a part of myself. And the way your mind works is you will find ways to try to trap that person in the relationship because there's that massive fear of losing part of yourself. Instead of you complete me, you know what's better? I am complete. You are complete. And as two wholes who come together, there's a certain synergy that happens, and that is called love. Otherwise, it's just need and manipulation. Micro. Okay? So that's number three. And then the ultimate step is really sitting down with yourself. And this is something I talk a lot about in Transformation Mastery, where it's asking yourself, like, hey, what's being poked inside of me? Why don't I feel complete to begin with? Sure, you can take different actions to give yourself that thing, but why is there a void to begin with? Why do I need someone to complete me? Right? Because what's the assumption behind it or, or something, or even money, or some situation, is that you're not enough without that thing. So you're continually reinforcing yourself, you're not enough. And then it comes down to really diving into yourself, identifying that, reowning it, and coming at the world, not coming, but coming at the world, from a place of wholeness. We live in an uncertain world. Just turn on the news, what do you see? Chaos, terror, suffering, things are changing so fast that your head is spinning. You know the feeling, being pulled in different directions by your friends, your family, mainstream media, not knowing what to do or who to believe. Did you ever stop and ask yourself, how did your life get this way? I felt so much shame when it comes to being me, and now I don't feel that shame anymore. I had no way of being able to deal with that pain, and for the first time in my life, I finally feel an inner stillness and peace in myself. I didn't even know what was happening, like my hands were just shaking. And it was just like me being my authentic self. Most of us live lives of escapism. Anything to cope with this feeling eating us up inside. Distracting ourselves with dumb things on TV. Numbing ourselves with junk food, alcohol, cigarettes and drugs. Is this the way life was meant to be? Or is there perhaps another way? It's been the first time in over 10 years uh, since my dad died that I actually felt like I did before. I've decided to take a stance for good, for love, for authenticity, and I've created a movement of people dedicated to raising the vibe. A movement dedicated to doing something about this, and it's called Transformation Mastery Academy. That was amazing, just being able to finally find that, that root reason. I really want to thank each and every one of you out of the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys. Now I'm not some fake guru promising you overnight results. What I promise you here is a tribe of people to help support you and guide you along this journey. In Transformation Mastery Academy, you'll no longer be alone. You'll no longer feel lost. You will be given the roadmap to true, permanent personal transformation. Enough with this fake life of quiet desperation. Step into your truth and join the movement.